Hey guys, and welcome to my updated video. So today, we're going to be talking about taxes. Ah yes, taxes. Not the most exciting, sexy of topics to have to talk about. And while some people disagree with paying taxes, and others are of course less opposed to them, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter how you feel about them, for as Benjamin Franklin famously said, there are only two things certain in life, death and taxes. Luckily, meeting your tax obligations as a dropshipper is surprisingly simple, especially if you're using Shopify. Hopefully by the end of this video, you will see that they're not as overwhelming as you might have thought. Now in this video, you're going to learn what your tax obligations are if you are using Chinese-based AliExpress dropshippers, which is the main sourcing technique that we teach on this channel. This video is also only going to focus on what your tax obligations are when selling to customers that are based in the USA, as this is also the focus of this channel. We get a lot of people that email in and ask us, oh Sarah, can you make a video about what my tax obligations are if I sell to customers that are based in my country, for example, in Australia? Unfortunately though, guys, there are 195 countries in the world. We simply can't talk about what the tax obligations are for each of them which is why we're gonna focus on the biggest country that online sellers sell to, and that is the USA. By far, they have the biggest chunk of sales and online customers. Now, earlier in the year, I made a video on this exact subject. However, since that video, things have changed. And that's because of a very important Supreme Court ruling, Wafer versus South Dakota, that occurred on June 21st, 2018. This ruling has had a massive impact on tax obligations of dropshippers. So even if you've watched that last video, I strongly recommend that you watch this one as well. And it goes without saying, I am not a CPA, I am not an accountant, and I am not a lawyer. This is not official legal advice. As always, I must strongly recommend that you seek the advice of an accountant. Do not rely on me. All right, so now that we've got that out of the way, let's just jump straight into it. Question one. What taxes do I need to pay when dropshipping? When dropshipping, there are two main types of taxes that you need to pay. The first is income tax, and the second is potentially sales tax. Income tax is the easiest, so let's start with that first. How do dropshippers pay income tax? Income tax, for those of you that don't know, is a tax that you pay on the profit that your store makes for the year. That profit is your income. The same goes if you had a job. If you had a job, then you would be paying income tax on your wages. And with drop shipping, we pay income tax on the profit of our store. So if you don't make a profit, then you don't pay any income tax. In fact, you can often claim your losses as a tax credit. One of the most common tax questions that we get asked here on this channel is this. If I live outside the United States, maybe I live in Australia, but my customers are based in the USA. Who do I pay my taxes to? Do I pay my income taxes to the USA government or do I pay them to the Australian government? The answer is that you pay it to your government. So if you live in Australia, it doesn't matter if your customers are in the USA, you pay your income tax to the Australian government. You may also live in a country like the USA, where you not only have to pay income tax to the federal government, but you also have to pay it to your local state as well. If you live in a country like that, then yes, you are obligated to pay income tax to both the government and to the state. Of course, if you live in a country like New Zealand where we don't have states, then you don't need to worry about that. And please, please, please do not ask me what your local income tax laws are. I get asked questions like, Sarah, what are my tax obligations if I live in Iceland? Honestly though, I don't know because I live in New Zealand, I don't live in Iceland. I don't know every country's income tax laws. So please, please, please do your own research here. So that's your income tax obligations. Let's move on to the trickier issue, which is sales tax. Question two, what is sales tax and do I need to pay it? For those of you that don't know, sales tax is when a governing body places a tax on goods or services sold within their jurisdiction. In New Zealand, it's our federal government that does this, and our sales tax is called GST. The New Zealand government requires us to collect and pay it to them. In the United States, though, it's different. It's not their federal government, i.e. the one that Donald Trump is the president of, that manages sales tax. Instead, in the USA, it is individual states that do this. Each state can set their own tax rate, and they can also, within reason, set their own tax laws. And there are some states in the USA that are thus sales tax havens. No one is required to collect and pay sales tax within them. Yay! 
But of course, if you may have suspected, the majority of states in the USA are sadly not sales tax havens. Now, here is where things have changed from a previous video. In the USA, there used to be a law that required you to have to have something called nexus within a state before you were required to collect and pay sales tax to it. Nexus, for those of you that don't know, is a legal term. It means that you have a sufficiently large physical presence within a state to be required to collect and pay sales tax to it. To better explain nexus, let's use an example. Let's say that you are a citizen of the United States and you live in Arizona. Well, you have a house in Arizona. You live in Arizona. That's a pretty big physical presence, right? Well, that means that you have nexus within it. And so because you've got nexus in it, then it meant that you were required to collect and pay sales tax. In the past, you only had to pay tax to states that you had nexus in. So let's say a customer comes to your store who also lives in Arizona and they buy a mug for $15. Well, you are required to charge and collect sales tax on that order because you have nexus in Arizona. Their sales tax rate is 5.6%. So in this case here, the tax to collect is 84 cents. You are required to pay this 84 cents to the state of Arizona when tax time comes around. But in the past, let's say that you got a second order and this time your customer had come from Texas. Well, you didn't live in Texas, you owned no property in Texas, in fact you had nothing to do with the state of Texas. Because of this you had no physical presence in Texas and thus you didn't have nexus in it. The sales tax rate for Texas is 8.25%, but because you didn't have nexus in it, you didn't need to collect and pay any sales tax on that order. This meant then that if you didn't live in the USA, maybe you lived in the UK, that you usually had no nexus in any state, so you usually weren't required to collect or pay any sales tax at all for USA customers, which was a really nice bonus. This law was set in 1992 after a different Supreme Court case, Quill Corp v North Dakota. It was ruled that Nexus was required to collect and pay sales tax. But that law was recently abolished by the new Supreme Court ruling on June 21st. Here's what happened. In 2016, South Dakota passed a Kill Quill Bill. In it, it required out-of-state vendors regardless of nexus to collect and pay sales tax if they were making over $100,000 a year in sales or doing more than 200 transactions in the state of South Dakota. Well, the online furniture retailer Wayfair was not happy with this new law and they took South Dakota to court over it. And of course they lost. In a 5-4 decision, the Supreme Court ruled that their previous 1992 ruling was out of date with the current age of the internet and said that South Dakota was allowed to pass their bill. Question 3. Does this now mean that I had to collect and pay sales tax within all states in the USA? No, 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 it doesn't. The South Dakota vs Wayfair ruling sets two very important precedents. Firstly, yes, it does set the precedent that states are now allowed to pass their own bill that will require out-of-state vendors to have to collect and pay sales tax. However, it is important to note that until states have passed this legislature, the old rule still applies, and most states have yet to actually do this. So yes, that is one precedent, but it sets another. The South Dakota vs Wayfair ruling was affirmed by the Supreme Court, but that bill was aimed only at large online retailers. Again, to be eligible under this new law, you either have to be doing over $100,000 a year in sales in South Dakota or be doing over 200 transactions. When other states pass their own laws, they will need to be aimed at large online retailers as well to meet this precedent. If they want to expand that to include everyone, a new court case will be required. So here's the thing. If you are new to dropshipping, then you are not required to collect and pay sales tax within any state that you don't have nexus in. So don't worry about it. Once you get to the stage of this law impacting you, you will be making more than enough money to hire an accountant to manage all of this for you. And the chances are, even after all the states have passed their own version of this bill, you're probably only going to be collecting and paying sales tax to a small percentage of the states anyway, most likely the larger ones like New York. So let's calm down and figure out how most of you should be collecting sales tax by asking yourself one important question. Question, do I have nexus in any state in the USA? For most people, the only way that they're going to have nexus in a state is if they live in it or if they own property in it. There are some more obscure ways that you can have it, so if you suspect that you might be under these clauses, you should be sure to seek an accountant. 
And if you live outside the United States and you don't have Nexus in any state, then simply don't worry about it. Until you start making lots of money, this isn't going to impact you. And you can probably go away and leave this video right now. But if you do have Nexus in a state, then you are obligated to be collecting and paying sales tax within it. Luckily though, Shopify makes this very simple. All you gotta do is sign into your dashboard and click settings. On the settings page, click taxes. Once the page loads, come and click on the United States. Next, you'll need to let Shopify know which states you have a physical presence in. Type in the state and select it and give your zip code. Shopify will only let you add in tax settings for countries that you have a shipping option to. This store only has a shipping option enabled to the USA, which is why that is the only country that showed up in my list. Once you've done that, come and click on products and open up each of your products. I'm gonna be opening up one of mine in this store, the Camera Lens Travel Mug, and show you how to enable taxes on it. So all you've got to do is scroll down to the pricing box and tick the check box there. And once you've done that, click save. If you're eligible for sales tax, I recommend that you go and you tick it each time that you add a new product. Shopify will automatically collect the right amount of sales tax for the order, which is very handy because in some states, the amount of tax that you need to pay will change depending upon what city your customer lives in. For example, this is very relevant in the state of New York. I went in and did a $10 test purchase in my store and I put in my address for the first purchase to be from New York City and the second one to be from Buffalo. Despite both being located in the state of New York, the taxes charged for each were different since not only does the state of New York charge a 4% tax on both sales, but each of these cities has their own individual taxes to collect and pay as well. So the taxes for New York City are slightly higher than for Buffalo. But because Shopify automatically calculates for you, you don't need to worry about it. So hopefully meeting your tax obligations seems a little bit less scary. If you liked this video and you found it helpful and you'd like even more videos about creating a real dropshipping business, then be sure to subscribe to Wholesale Ted and click that little notification bell next to it so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. And did you know that we here at Wholesale Ted have a premium over the shoulder training program called the Dropship Club? It teaches you how to set up a dropshipping store from start to finish. And if you would like to join that, simply click on the link in the video description below. And before you run off, I've got one last freebie I'd like to give you. Here at Wholesale Ted, we have a free ebook that teaches you the six steps that six figure dropshipping stores follow to make over $10,000 every month. To get that ebook for yourself, again, simply click on the link in the video description below.